guys. Thank you for joining me today. Um, it's really a joy to uh, be with you and to uh, preach the Word of God to you. Um, it is so amazing how the Lord is working and what He's doing. But before I get into that, let's pray. Uh, Father, I bless you for this time together and I bless you for what you're about to do and what you are doing and what you've already done. Oh Lord, I pray that you'll go down to the very marrow of my of my bones and teach me before you teach them, Father, what you're about to say today. Like it's going to be so life changing. Um, how you're going to teach us to work from the middle. Father, we bless you and we love you and we give you praise. Speak to me, speak through me in the name of Jesus. Amen. So guys, uh, today's sermon title, I think, will be called uh, Working the Promise from the Middle. I went through uh, um, something this week that, you know when you think something is over and you've conquered it and then it re rears its ugly head again? Well, um, as, as some of you know, um, about three years ago I've struggled. I struggled with diabetes. Now I told that story, but for a quick recap, <laughs> when I was 35 years old, I um, I went in for a regular checkup, and I I found out uh, the doctor called one day and wanted to see me for the results. Um, so it turned out that I had, um, type 2 diabetes, and so I, 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 with the help of the Lord, worked really hard, and then I got my blood sugars under control. Um, for those of you who don't know about blood sugars, um, regular, there are two types of blood sugar. Uh, the blood sugar that happens when you eat right now, like this morning, or, and the blood, and the sustaining blood sugar that happened, happens every four months. Now, now your sustaining blood sugar is supposed to be between a 6 and a 7. Lower than a 6, you're in trouble. Higher than uh, a 7, you're in trouble. So, 6.5 means you're not in trouble, but you have to watch out. Uh, so, I was doing really well, eating really well, I thought, because I only eat um, brown stuff, but what I didn't realize is it's still carbs, and I went to the doctor this week, and not went to the doctor, I had a phone call from the doctor, and she said, Rachel, your blood sugar is 6.5, I was like, what, what the heck, and, um, so, uh, now I'm kind of getting into to working it again, and, and I'm saying, and I'm saying, God, you promised it. He said, I never promised that it would be easy. I gave, I gave you a promise, but you have to work, have to work it. You're not there yet, but you're working it in the middle. 
you got a miracle, so you you can do it again. So, um, now I'm working on increasing my veggies and eating more properly. Um, and I said all of that to say that sometimes when you get a promise, it, it, um, it, it has to be worked. Like, you cannot just say, oh, I'm healed, and that's it. Sometimes the process continues, and that's what I've learned. Like, it, it's not... It's not the beginning of my journey, and it's not the end of my journey. It's in the middle. And even with some other stuff that I've got going on in my life, it's the same thing. That it's not the beginning, it's in the middle. And, and the Lord says, you, you, he, he said, Rachel, you have to work the promise from the middle, like, you can't just, uh, get, like, a diagnosis of healed and just lay back on your morals, start, lay back on your laurels, sorry, and start eating, like, whatever you want, not whatever you want, but just, um, just start getting complacent and, Looking back at it now, if that's what I did, I got complacent. I didn't start start eating kind of crazy, but I kind of got complacent. Because sometimes when the miracle happens, you get complacent. And no, everybody talks about the beginning and everybody talks about the end, but nobody really talks about the middle. And the Lord says, you have to work your miracle in the middle, not in the beginning, not in the end. Because sometimes with stories, we like to hear the beginning of a story, we like to hear the end of a story, but we don't like to hear the middle of the story. And usually stories never end. It's a constant work in, pro in, pro in process. You're a, um, so we, we are getting better and better every day. So it doesn't end. So there's, see, the problem is that there's no credit on your life. Uh, there's just no credits on your life, you know. When you watch uh, a movie, like, you know, however, whatever kind of movie you watch, whether action, romance, whatever kind of movie you watch, uh, there's always a beginning, middle, and an end. And in the end, uh, the, the good person wins, or sometimes the bad person wins, and the ending is depressing, and everybody dies, and it's over. But with life... It's never over. It's never over. And sometimes with some miracles, you see them, but never, you see them and never, um, you see them and never have to worry about them again. But with some others, you have to, um, continuously work them to keep it up. You can't lay back and say, oh, I'm healed. The Lord will take care of me now. I can just go on. And that's what we like, but that's not always the case. And he says uh, right now to somebody, work it from the middle. Work that Thing. Do whatever you need to do to maintain it and know that he'll come alongside you. And I think that we don't like, we don't, some of us don't like to, to work it. We want it to be easy. But in this season, it's not going to be easy. It's going to be 
rough. It's going to be a lot of ups and downs. It's going to be tough. But it's going to be worth it. It is worth it for your health. It is worth it for your wellness. It is worth it. And he says, he says, work that thing from the middle. And there is another area of my life too that I'm working. It, I'm working it from the middle. Um, a lot of creative areas of my life. This is not. The, the beginning of my creative journey with writing, songwriting, what have you, but this is, um, this is the time where I'm just waiting to see what, um, what avenue is going to open up. I've got a couple feel, feelers in a couple different avenues, but I'm waiting to see what, which one the Lord opens up, and, uh, some, but in waiting, uh, in waiting, it often means working, like, you know, while you're waiting for, for that big something to happen, um, working as well, so, while you're waiting for your dream job, going to school, volunteering, finding out as much as you can about the industry, studying. So, not just saying, I have a dream to own a pizza restaurant. Well, um, do you know anything about making pizza? Do you know anything about the cost of dough, the cost of running a restaurant, um, business licensing, or whatever you need to, to do that? So while you're waiting for the promise, do your due diligence. Go to school. Do your research. Um, exercise. Do your, you know, work your promise from the middle. Don't just sit around and say, oh, God will help me. No, no, baby. God doesn't help lazy. He assists those people who work. Who work. And I'm not saying it, this is, don't get me wrong. This is not faith and works. This is not about faith versus works. God wants us to have faith, not works. Yes, that's true in a spiritual context. But what I'm talking about is a practical context where you have faith, but you have to work that thing um, as well as having faith. Um, I think that we think faith is just, oh, I have faith and it's passive. I, I have faith so I don't have to do anything. No, but faith is active. Faith is, I know you're super, I'm natural, I'm going to put your super with my, with my natural and it, it will happen for me that way. So what the Lord's saying is, work it. Work, work it from the middle. And while you're waiting, work it. Prepare. Get ready. Go to school and even past school. Be, be the best you can in your field. Be the best you can in your field. Do as much research. Talk to as many people um, as you can about your field. And, and discover all the technical aspects. Um, each industry, each thing you go into has technical terms to it that, you, that other people don't use. Um, like in the church, the church 
has its own language. Like, we use language like Serbian. We use language like um, a service, meaning church. Or some churches use language like experience. Uh, some churches use language like pastor, priest, deacon, first lady. That is all the language of the church. So every industry you go into have a language. So while you're waiting and have faith to break into that industry, learn the language, do your research, find out as much as you can about that industry so that when you get there, you can astound them with how much you already know. You're not there, you're not there to just learn, you're there to be an active participant. So study right now. Don't wait to get there and say, oh, I'll study. Study right now. If you want to be a speaker and you're wondering how to get better because you think God has uh, called you to preach or whatever, study preachers. Study preachers. Study how they how they take apart a sermon, because each preacher is very different. Study the different ways that they do it, and then in that you find your own niche. When you've studied enough people in your industry, whether it be preaching or uh, construction work or whatever, when you've studied enough people in your industry, then you can find a bit of you. Like uh, some people said, uh, you can you can copy uh, um, for a time until you find you. I say, study them, especially when it comes to. Uh, preaching, um, study them, and take a bit of this and a bit of that, what you like from what they do, and create your own you. You don't have to carbon copy exactly anyone, but you can take what they, what, what you, what you, what you like about what you do about what they do and then meld it with what you do to create something great. And that doesn't only go for preachers. That goes for anyone. Uh, so find people in your industry to study. The Bible says study and show yourself approved. So study Find people in your industry to study, to to ask questions, to to emulate. What, if you're going into an industry, make sure you know that industry back to front or as much as you can. Or if you're a student. Get around other people in that industry and get in the environment of that industry so that you, you can get hands-on experience about that industry. And like I said last week, if you're a student and you really don't know what to do, that's okay. But um, just, 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 just start somewhere. That's what the Lord is saying. Just start somewhere and work your way, work your way from there. Like try different things, do different things, volunteer different places, um, get your feet wet. At, 
on in certain stuff and never give up if you know the Lord has called you to do anything never give up and, and the the promise may be long in coming but it will come and and while it's coming just work it and never stop praying never stop knocking never stop learning never stop growing into that thing and be sure that God is not slack on his promises. When he's promised you something, he will do it. It will come to pass. He's not short regarding his promises. And we just have to keep on knocking, keep on going. And when when you don't feel like keep on keeping on going, Remember your reasons to, that you started. So when you've started something and you're kind of gung-ho about it, write it down. Have a vision statement for whatever you start. So that when the time comes where you just want to give up, you can look at that and say, that's why I'm doing this. Because let me tell you something. There will always be a time in anything, whether it be starting a business, starting a church, whether it be, you know, friendships, relationships, where you'll want to give up. There will always be a time where you'll want to give up. And, um... That vision statement will give you the the gas in your car to never give up. It will give you the fortitude and the tenacity saying, that's why I'm doing this. So find your why for whatever you're doing it. And work that thing after you find your why. And expect God to do great things. And while you're expecting God to do great things, know that challenging things will come. Because greatness doesn't come without challenge. And when I say greatness there, I mean whatever God has planned for you to do, it will not come without challenge. But then you cannot break. You cannot let the devil win. You cannot let the devil distract you. Is This is something he likes to do. You cannot let the devil ask you, did God really say? Then you say, yes, he did really say. Another thing, too, along with uh, working your promise and getting a vision um, understand that you are going to fail at some point in the midst of your promise you are going to fail but remember that failure is not final and God has a purpose in your failure God has a lesson in your failure to make you stronger. And I know it's hard, but he says keep going, keep pushing, keep exercising. Don't give up. Don't get complacent. You can do this. And when you reach your goal, just don't stop. Continue. Like, because... Sometimes, like I told you with me, when when I hit the um, mark of good sugar, I kind of not fell back, but I kind of got lackadaisical with what I was supposed to do. And that's what happens sometimes 
when we reach the promise, we get kind of kind of lock and days go, oh, I'm married now. Oh, I have kids now. Oh, I have this now. Oh, I have that now. And the Lord says, do not get lackadaisical. Still work that thing like you did before, because if you continue to work it, you'll get more strategy to do it. And like I said before, you will want to give up at some point. In anything you try to do, you will want to give up on that at that point. You will want to stop knocking on doors. You will want to stop looking for that job that just came and say, Lord, it's too hard. But don't do it. Don't do it because you have it in you to, to do what God has called you to do. And don't forget what he's told you. Do not Forget what he told you. Write the vision. Make it plain. Do not forget what he's told you. He's told you some great things. And in the middle, we tend to forget. At the beginning of a promise, we're like, come, come, you're like, we're like yay, we're going to do this. And at the, um, in the middle, we kind of slump, uh, we kind of hit a slump. We're like, God, this is taking forever. And But we need to work it in the middle. We need to work that promise in the middle. We need to go to school. We need to do our research. We need to uh, get around people that know the industry. Get around others who know the business that we want. We need to look at reliable YouTube videos about that industry. We need to go to the library. We need to do the research, learn the language, and understand that the promise is usually an ongoing process. This is, life is not a movie where the credits just roll and you don't have to do anything. Uh, the credits are just going to roll and the movie is going to be over. Life is never over until you're in the ground. You constantly have to work at it. You constantly have to work at your marriage. You constantly have to work at your business. You constantly have to work at your songwriting. You constantly have to work at your book writing. You constantly have to work at whatever thing you have to do. And don't worry if you have to get um, a side job while you're working for your promise. Because that may not seem to be a part of your purpose. But the skills you're getting from that side job are going to help you in the long run. So... You may, you may be a singer working in a pizza parlor, but the skills you're, you're picking up at, at the pizza parlor will help you in, in your singing, like the, the business of being on time and being precise and learning the skills. And if you're a creative writer, and you can do it your, yourself. I've heard some people say, uh, write every day or, you know, do all that and um, uh, that it'll be good. That works for some people. What I say to, the, what I say to creative people is the same thing I say about your relationship with God. Find your rhythm. Find what works for you. For some people, it helps if they write every day. For some people, it helps if they um, write just when they feel like it because writing every day uh, makes them crazy. Um, like, like me. Or 
not I shouldn't say when they feel like it. Right when the spirit gives you utterance, because when the spirit gives you, uh, when at least for me, when the spirit gives me utterance, it it becomes easier rather than me trying to perfect and write every day in my own strengths because of uh like I want to get better at this. For some people, it works. For me, it doesn't. That's what I would say. Find your own rhythm. And what I, what I uh, come to understand is um, I'm a portal for God to do what he wants to do. So, it, so what he puts in me doesn't come from me. It comes from him. I'm a portal of what he wants of some of what he wants to bring to the world. And as a portal, I'll just say what he tells me to say. I'll just uh, song write when he tells me to song write. I'll just do what he tells me to do. And that's what, how I uh, work from the middle. Because so, like I said, we often hear about the beginning and we often hear at the end, but we don't hear about the middle. And in the middle, it's tough, it's full of challenges, and it could could be great too. Um, so don't forget that if your middle's challenging, that's okay. Everyone's middle is challenging. Life is boring. Like. Life is boring in the middle. Life is full of waiting. We like the movie. We like a beginning, a middle, and an end. But like I said multiple times in this sermon, life doesn't end until you're dead and gone to be with Jesus. Um, and the middle is so somehow you can get weary and well-doing. For those who are in the middle and waiting right now, just keep going. Just keep preaching, keep building, keep reaching, keep on going. Don't give up. I know it seems strenuous, but you'll, you'll get there. And when you get there, you'll, you'll have to You'll have to work still. The, the process of purpose is never ending. There's always another goal. But within that other goal too, don't forget to stop and rest. Don't forget to stop and rest within working and within striving and within going after what God has put in your life. Don't forget to rest. You need to rest for your for your fuel. You need to have fun. You need to you, you need to work. You need all of that stuff to be a complete person. Um, what the Lord said to me about my health, He said, um, He said, He said, you're not unhealthy. Your body's just out of balance. Your body's getting too much of one thing and not enough of another. So when your body and your life is out of balance, it tips one way or another. So if you do too much working and not enough resting, you'll burn yourself out. If you do too much resting and not enough working, you won't get to the promise. So, God says to you today, get back in balance. We all have an area of our lives that that is out of balance. And he's saying, get back in balance. Because it is possible to have a wonderful ministry, a wonderful, um, wonderful, to be a wonderful preacher, but have a sucky marriage, 
and it is wonderful to it is wonder it is possible to have a great marriage and have a church that is falling apart so he's saying get back in balance and that is totally different for everybody balance is not the same for everybody so you have to pray and ask God where am I out of balance and and what could I do to get back into balance and he'll show you because everybody's everybody's life is different there are some areas where you are thriving and there are some areas constantly where you are dying and the Lord says I wish above all things that you would prosper and be in health and prosperity uh, means peace and nothing broken nothing missing and nothing lacking and that's the kind of prosperity he wants you to have he wants you to have balance in your life so where are you out of balance where do you need to um, find balance in your life and that's what he's saying and that's how you work, work it from the middle because the middle is not is not pretty it's not sexy it's not anything it is boring it is tedious it is a lot of work but it is worth it the the things that you have to go through in the middle will benefit you when you get to your next level and you never stop moving like it's so funny when we say get to your next level like after you get to this place life stops and the credits roll but the credits never stop rolling there's always another challenge there's always another thing to things to learn things to do things to grow and um, while you're learning and growing and God is teaching you just understand that you're a person and respect the fact that you're a person not a machine and that you need time to rest and have fun and there's also a time to work and a time to grow and a time to be in school and a time to just absorb like Ecclesiastes um, to everything there is a season and a time for every purpose under the heaven heavens and and that time is different for every person so the Lord is asking as well as well as get back, back and balance what time is it for you is it a time is it a time to get up and work or is it a time to rest and relax and have fun because we need both because without both without both we're out of balance and when we're out of balance something suffers thank you guys for being with me today I really appreciate you take care